Uh, good day, uh, I'm Ram. Uh, it's a honor to be here uh, to share my research on the effect of block code polymer nano reinforcements on the low velocity impact response of sandwich structures. Uh, like the audience here, I have quite a few non engineering friends, and whenever I tell them I study this, they go, effect of what? On the what? Of who? <laughs> so I try to uh, say, have you watched the show Mythbusters? Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, popular uh, science show, they take some urban legend like a uh, cab bulletproof glass uh, withstand automatic fire and use the scientific method to either confirm the myth or bust it. And what they do over a 30 minute uh, show I take over three years to do it. Uh, <laughs> of course, with fewer explosions. <laughs> so uh, this uh, project is a collaborative effect uh, between uh, uh, our university here in Australia and the RCMT Paris Tech in uh, France. Uh, so part of the uh, research was done in France. Before we go into the uh, nano reinforcements and their effect, uh, a brief history of uh, composites. Uh, composites are a class of materials that are made of two or more distinct materials to give uh, a tailored uh, properties. Uh, these aren't uh, uh, any new invention, they have been around for a long time. Uh, Adobe, uh, uh, which was used as a construction material uh, way back in uh, 30,000 uh, before Common Era, uh, uh, used clay uh, and straw. Uh, uh, composite bows have been around for 5,000 years. Uh, so, composites aren't exactly new. Uh, sandwich composites are a subcategory of these composites. Uh, they aren't as delicious as their cousins, they aren't uh, edible, uh, but they have a similar concept. They have a, a, a low density core sandwich between two thin, uh, stiff plates. So, uh, this construction <coughs> allows it to have a lightweight structural material. Okay? Because of their uh, desirable properties, such, such as uh, the high specific stiffness and strength, they yeah, found applications in uh, uh, any uh, uh, field where there is a weight critical uh, 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 application like aerospace or automotive and marine structure. Uh, traditionally, sandwich materials have been uh, using uh, conventional metals like aluminium for the uh, uh, face sheet or skin, uh, but a new uh, uh, sandwich with fiber reinforced plastics have also uh, being used in the modern times. Uh, in the fiber reinforced fa uh, face sheets, the skin, the uh, thin, stiff part, is made of a uh, fiber in a polymer matrix. The fiber can be glass, carbon, Kevlar, the matrix is uh, a polymer uh, resin like epoxy. The core of the sandwich material, uh, because we require a, a lightweight, low density material, they are polymer forms or honeycombs, wood, etc. Uh, one of the uh, limitations of the sandwich materials which uh, uh, prevent it from widespread application is their susceptibility to impact. And uh, the problem here is that the impact load can create something called badly visible impact damage, where from the outside the structure looks fine, you think it's going to uh, uh, work well, but uh, the integrity of the structure is compromised and it fails catastrophically. Uh, so, Part of this project uh, came about because a Thales, uh, working in France, uh, were interested in aeronautical helmets, helmets for pilots, and they were looking at shrapnel protection. And uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, right, doesn't matter. Uh, so, the, uh, to improve these impact properties, because there were uh, some issues with localized damage, uh, several researchers have proposed different methods to uh, improve the impact resistance. One of the methods is uh, rubber toughening. So, adding microparticles of rubber to the uh, resin, uh, uh, the, uh, the matrix part of the uh, skin. Uh, but it came with its own set of limitations. Uh, it reduced the desirable properties, uh, thermal properties, some stiffness loss. So uh, researchers have moved on to uh, nano reinforcements, particularly with carbon nanotubes and nano clay. Uh, 
there are certain challenges with these new narrow reinforcements, uh, primarily uh, in uh, regards to uh, uniform dispersion, because the nanoparticles have a tendency to agglomerate and form clusters of microparticles. So enter Arkema. Uh, Arkema is another uh, company in France that we work with. Uh, they have developed a block copolymer which uh, is present in a powder form and is uh, readily uh, dissolved in epoxy uh, uh, resins. And during the polymerization reaction, they uh, self-assemble in the nanometer scale. So they produce homogeneous uh, uh, dispersion. So they don't have the problems with carbon nanotube and nanotube. So uh, the myth that we are going to study today is that uh, does the addition of these new uh, block copolymer nanoparticles really improve the impact resistance of sandwich plates? We have chosen for the study a Kevlar uh, fiber reinforced skin uh, and a Rohassel uh, uh, particular kind of uh, foam as the core material. So uh, to test the uh, validity, we uh, use uh, an experimental method. Uh, we use low velocity uh, impact test with drop tar. Uh, the drop tar, uh, the principle is fairly straightforward. It's a falling weight impact. We uh, 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 elevate uh, the uh, impactor on the carriage to a particular height, and we drop it so that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, uh, collides with the target plate, and we have sensors to uh, measure uh, the response of the structure. Unfortunately, we may have the same problem as before. No. <laughs> so this is with a uh, Kevlar sandwich with the reference resin, that is, without any nanoparticles. And you can see that the impactor has penetrated this structure. It has gone through. And uh, this is something undesirable, like it has uh, localized damage. Uh, so when we uh, move to uh, the sandwich structure with the nanoparticles, we see that there is no perforation. The impactor bounces back. Uh, we have uh, uh, improved the impact resistance. So uh, what the presence of the nano strength, the nanoparticles has done is that it has spread the load over a larger area. So there isn't as much localized damage. There isn't fiber breakage. We can see for both the uh, 12 joule and the 16 joule impact on the uh, if we have the sample with the neat resin, that is the reference resin, and there is the penetration, whereas there isn't any perforation in the uh, uh, samples with the nanoparticle. So uh, the postmortem damage assessment, we uh, take sections of the uh, sandwich. Uh, we inject color resin to preserve the shape, and we can see that with increasing energies, the uh, damage in the uh, sandwich uh, without nanoparticles is quite high. Whereas uh, we have uh, uh, we have the same phenomena with the sandwich with nano strength. So we also uh, observe uh, the failure mechanisms involved uh, uh, at the microscopic level to see uh, what causes the uh, improvement in the uh, impact resistance. Uh, we identify different uh, 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 phenomena that improves the uh, uh, energy dissipation uh, without failure, catastrophic failure. We can also look at the foam core, uh, and we can see between the uncrushed foam and the crushed foam, the cell walls have buckled and they have failed. Uh, uh, the final part of the uh, thesis is to develop a numerical model, a mathematical uh, tool to uh, simulate the experiment. So we have similar as an uh, experimental setup, an impactor on a square sandwich plate, and we have uh, developed the model. Uh, uh, for, uh, the advantage of this is uh, we are able to uh, uh, extend the study to look at the effect of various parameters, boundary conditions, and so forth. So uh, to summarize, um, we wanted to study uh, the effect of the uh, nano strength. And the myth has been confirmed. It does improve the impact resistance. Uh, as Arthur Clarke famously said, uh, any uh, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So this uh, uh, nanometer scale particle, uh, this magic dust, has improved the impact resistance of our structure. And uh, this result is quite remarkable. Thank you.
very interesting results. It sounds like this is a significant uh, advance uh, in, in composite materials. I'm just wondering if you could comment on uh, the comparison in terms of um, is there an increase in weight, increasing cost compared to standard uh, composites used in, for example, Oyama? Uh, is, this, is this going to really change all the composite materials that we're going to be using? Uh, these now uh, reinforcements are fairly new. That's why we want to study uh, if the effect uh, is translates to uh, uh, just the face sheets or is it only with the uh, sandwich structure? What happens when we change the fabric from Kevlar to say glass? So because uh, there are fiber matrix uh, interfaces which are at uh, the micro level uh, and uh, it's an ongoing work. Uh, we have found, for instance, that with glass fiber reinforced composites, we don't have such pronounced effect with, of the nanoparticles. So there is potential here to have widespread use uh, because there isn't any weight penalty. Uh, we have the same uh, weight of the structure uh, with or without the nanoparticles. The uh, uh, processing uh, uh, doesn't require any separate equipment. Uh, the uh, Thales, for instance, were very keen to have uh, a setup which uh, fits in with their assembly line, with their production systems they don't want to uh, modify their production systems. So it, that fulfills the criteria as well. But it is to be seen if it will have that widespread uh, impact with uh, uh, many different applications, body armors. Thank you. Thank you.